The CSS position property can help you manipulate the location of an element. You can set how an element is positioned within your document. When building a web page, there can be multiple elements on the page, as you know. Each has their own position, uses, and designs. It's important to learn how we can arrange these elements and have control over the layout. The position property in CSS determines how an element is positioned in a document. It specifies the type of positioning method for each element. The CSS position property is a single keyword, and we attach a value to it and set the specific position of an element. There are five main values for the position property. We will be working with these throughout this lesson. The values are static, relative, absolute, fixed, and sticky. So first, we set the position property. Then, the coordinates of an element is positioned using the helper properties. In order for you to understand this, let's look at what happens when we use position on an actual web page. Here's the web page I've built for you for this particular example. As you can see, it contains a section with a header and a paragraph, followed by an article, and within the article we have five figure elements. The figure elements contain an image and a fig caption. I've applied minimal styling to some of the elements. Specifically, the figure has a dashed border around it and a margin on the top and the bottom of half an M. As you can see, the figure elements are block level elements, so they by default take up the entire width of the document. At this point, we have not assigned any position properties to any of the elements. Let's go ahead and make some changes here. We'll start off by targeting the first figure, which I've given a class of object one. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna add the position property and we're gonna use the value of static. If we refresh our page, you will see that no real change has occurred. Static is the default value provided by HTML. So we really don't need to use static unless we're trying to overwrite something that has other position on it. When we use static, the element is simply positioned according to the flow of the document. If we applied any of our helper properties, they would have no effect. That means if we want to move elements on our page, static is really of no use. Let's move on to example number two. For figure two, I'm going to use a position of relative. If I refresh my page, you can see that the second figure also has no visual change on the page. What relative does is it sets the new position of an element relative to the normal position. In other words, an element is positioned according to the normal flow of the document. The difference between static and relative is we have the ability to apply those helper properties to the element. We can use relative and in conjunction with a helper property, for instance, if I go ahead and add a value of left and set this to 200 pixels. If we save and refresh, you can see that figure two has now been pushed 200 pixels from the left. When you use relative, the elements in the document are arranged in the normal position if we don't provide any position property to it. Using relative allows us to arrange the elements according to the normal position. The most common way in which we use relative is in conjunction with absolute. So let's move on and talk about absolute and then I'll show you what this looks like. For figure three, I'm going to set the position to absolute. If I set figure three to position absolute, before I hit refresh, I want you to look carefully at my document. This is figure three, the one with the octopus. Figure four has a seal and figure five has the shark. If we refresh, you can see what's happened. The absolute positioned object is now sitting on top of the unaffected object. So the octopus is sitting on top of the seal. When we use position absolute, the element is removed from the normal document flow. That means that other elements in the document will act like the element with position absolute doesn't exist. So we've taken the octopus figure and we have taken it out of the normal document flow. All of the other elements are gonna act like it doesn't exist and they will just slide up to replace 
the position that the octopus originally took. Now, if we go ahead and set some of our helper properties, let's see what happens. I'm going to use left of 200 pixels, just like we did on the relatively positioned element. When I do this, you will see that the element behaves much like the relatively positioned element. Now we can see the seal because it is taking up the space in the normal flow. This one is now being controlled by absolute. Watch what happens if I add a helper property of top and I set this to zero. When we refresh, if we look at the page now, you can see that the octopus image has now gone to the top of the document. An element with position absolute is positioned relative to its parent element that has position. Now, since none of the other elements on our page that are ancestors of this figure tag have position, it's going to be positioned relative to the body element. This is the initial containing block. And if we continue to use these values and change them, this element is going to be positioned based on its containing block. Now, let me show you what happens if we assign a position to the article. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll put a border around article so that we can clearly see this. My article has a class of example one, so I'll use that as a selector. I'm going to make a border that is solid, one pixel, and we'll just make this teal. If we refresh, you can see the border on the article. Now, if I happen to give the article a position value, watch what happens to our octopus. For the article, I'm just going to assign a position of relative. When I save my page and I refresh, you can now see that the octopus has been placed 200 pixels from the left edge of the article and it's positioning at zero from the top of the article. Now we have a slight gap and that's due to the margin that we put on our figure element. I like to think of position relative as a switch. When we turn this on, any descendant element that is using position of absolute is going to be affected by that ancestor that has position relative. The second figure has no impact on the third figure, and that's because it is not an ancestor. It is a sibling. Let's look at another position property. This time we're going to look at fixed. If I save the page and we refresh, you can see that the seal behaves similarly to how our absolutely positioned element initially behaved. Fixed is going to remove the element from the normal document flow. It is positioned relative to the viewport. If we go ahead and assign a top value of zero and we save, you can see that this comes to the very top of the page. Even though its parent element, the article, has position relative, it is not affected by that particular behavior. It is being positioned relative to the viewport property. Now there are two main differences between fixed and absolute. In position fixed, all the elements are placed relative to the HTML document, even if its parent has some sort of position on it. The other thing to note is that when we use position of fixed, if our page scrolls, so I'm going to make my web page smaller so I do have scrolling. Watch what happens when I scroll. You can see that the rest of the items are now going to appear behind the seal picture. They're appearing behind the fixed element. When you apply the position of fixed, these elements are not affected by scrolling. They stay in their exact same position even when we scroll the page. The final position property that we have is position sticky. Position sticky is kind of like a mix between relative and fixed. If we simply declare position sticky and we refresh, you can see that nothing visually really happens to our shark figure element. If the page is a little bit shorter, it simply scrolls like it normally would. So it does not have the same behavior as the fixed element does. Now, if we add a helper property, so I'm going to go ahead and assign bottom to this element. I will save. And if we refresh, the element has moved slightly. But now if I make my page more narrow, 
you can see how the element is moving with the bottom of the page. It essentially has been stuck to this particular place at the bottom of the page. So as we change the scroll position of the window, the element with the sticky position sticks to its original position. It also is worth noting if we make our page more narrow, the last element, object 5, is the one that's going to sit in front of everything else. In addition to the helper properties of left, right, top, and bottom, we also have a helper property of Z index. The Z index allows us to control the stacking order of our elements. What we'll do in this case is we'll come to object 4. This is the seal. I'm going to add a Z index value, and we'll just assign a value of 5. When we refresh our page, you can see that now the figure 4, the one with the seal, appears in front of everything else. That's because it has a higher Z index. The Z index can take both positive and negative values. If we change this to negative 5 and we refresh, it's now going to appear behind everything else. So it doesn't matter what else is on the page, it will be in the back. It is worth noting that the default Z index is basically 0. So the stacking order, if you don't add Z index, is going to be determined by the order that the elements appear within the HTML. When we add the Z index, if we simply increase it or decrease it by 1 and nothing else has Z index, it will allow that element to be behind, or if we change to a positive value, it will come to the front. It is common when you're using Z index that you use higher values than just separating things out one at a time because you might want to be able to slip something in between. And if you have a Z index that is higher or lower, you have some wiggle room to work with. By being able to use Z index, we are able to control the stacking order of the elements. So now you should have a basic understanding of the position property and the helper properties and how they may affect elements on your web page. We will be looking at how we can use position in a more applicable way in one of our future lessons. But for right now, I just wanted to introduce you to the position property and its helper properties and give you an overview of how these things work together.